when it comes to predictive programming stuff, are these artists just tapping in to the timeline, or do you think there's something? Is there something more to this? Are they are they gearing us up for the world uh, when it comes to someone like Jonathan Nolan? You know, it's hard to say. Like so, in the specific cases, uh, I have a couple buddies who did uh, their grad work actually on what I wrote. So I wrote for more uh, of a pop audience. Originally, yeah. it was actually what I what I wrote was going to be grad work, and I decided not to do it. <laughs> but I have a couple buddies. They're called Psyop Cinema. So shout out to those guys. They actually go a lot more uh, into depth, like digging into the specific screenwriters and producers and hey does that guy actually have an intelligence connection is he maybe working with the uh, you know cons consultants from the cia mm. which is very prominent in, in hollywood there's actually oh, yeah. tons of consultants and uh you know uh, cia operatives that uh over the years has actually come out uh milt bearden chase brandon they're the, they're the publicly known uh hollywood cia consultants but i think there's a lot more again it comes out later on as we said that that even A-listers work for the CIA right. in various capacities, not just in operations, but um, for example, Jennifer Garner for uh, many years was actually doing public PR for the CIA. Really? So, yeah, I that's that. because um, when she was on Alias with J.J. Abrams, uh -huh. uh, this is in academia, right? The CIA was consulting on the show and telling them like, well, here, do this, do this, do this. Right. Which is very interesting if you go back and watch Alias. Uh, there's a lot of clues in that show, I think. Very interesting. But, um, I'm rambling. I, I apologize, but that's all good. You know, more my, names. Michael Crichton is interesting because uh, there's a lot of uh, predictive elements in Michael Crichton's stories, which makes uh, some of it's silly, goofy stuff like right. Jurassic Park's kind of stupid. But <laughs> we could uh, be there soon too. Story. We could be there soon too. I mean, uh, yeah, anything's possible in our crazy world. But I think like he wrote that one book that's really prescient that they all everybody has like poo pooed because he cre critiques like the climate stuff is a big scam hmm i don't know that i forget the name of that one but yeah yeah he had a book calling the climate scam a depopulation trick huh yeah and then he wrote um let me think there's some other thing that he wrote other than the west world that was very predictive it's escaping me at the moment but um to get back to the point of west world i think that um some people even question his death. I don't know if you know the history of like, but there's no, weird things about Michael Crichton's death that are, that are sus. What happened? Um, I don't remember, but, there, but I remember that when it happened, they were like, maybe he died because he was putting too much in his books. I mean, I don't know. I'm just, yeah. And it, I was thinking about, um, Ernest Hemingway recently, you know, towards the end of his life, he became, do you know about how he became really paranoid? And he thought yeah, well, he was, was he was harassed by the FBI. And but no one believed him until years later. Right. Like, until, until, yeah, <laughs> and they admitted that, yeah, we were harassed. Yeah, you know, we were. And he was like, geez, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Um so yeah, there could have been something like that going on with, with Michael Crichton. I mean, there's multiple uh like I can't remember if he wrote Looker, but uh Coma is about like human trafficking and uh body part trafficking. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Prey, he wrote about genetic manipulation, modification. Um yeah, sometimes I wonder, you know, are these people being fed information to, to get us geared up for that future? Or are the people in the CIA or whomever looking at it and being like, that's a good idea. We should chase that down. Maybe it's a mixture of both, honestly. I think it's symbiotic relationship. Yeah. 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 For example, in uh, Annie, Annie Jacobson's uh, History of DARPA book, she says that the Pentagon and DARPA brought in Hollywood directors to have a symbiotic relationship where they actually ask the screenwriters and directors, give us some ideas on super soldiers. If you were making a movie, what would you think a super soldier would have? And then okay. the DARPA people would give two, uh, she mentions uh, like Kathleen Kennedy, maybe James Cameron, I forget who else, but like having these discuss, <laughs> and then they would be like, <clears throat> oh, so here's what you really have. This is where you're really at. We'll put this in the next movie, right? So. Wow. So that book uh, vindicates the. the oh, I got to read that. Uh, that could also be what was going on with a uh, mountain look in Laurel Canyon too. That symbiotic relationship of oh, yeah. creatives coming and having these kind of powwows. We're like, oh, hey, that's a good idea. We can just replicate that in our other crazy laboratory where we're doing evil stuff. You know, and I, I think about you know, obviously there's consultants on shows like uh, Fringe or X Files too. Oh yeah. You know what, yeah. what's going on there? Because uh, there's there's stuff. I mean, some stuff on Fringe, which I like that show. There's stuff on Fringe that's obviously far-fetched for now, but there's other stuff like remote viewing that has been going on for decades yeah. with the government. You know, we're, we're in the panhandle of West Virginia, and we're not very far from places where they were doing remote viewing 
you know, experiments in Maryland. Yeah, that was all real under uh, yeah, SRI, Stanford Research, um, right. Stargate Project, that's real, uh, Gateway Process, I mean, that's been declassified. Yep. What exactly that's describing, and I, I don't know, it's kind of a confusing, weird thing. But what we do know is that the government was studying occult uh, techniques and processes at that time, and presumably continued to, I don't know, but... Um, uh, what was your question? Which uh, I was just saying uh, about... I watched know, Fringe, um, and that was J.J. Abrams, didn't it? That was J.J. Abrams, yeah. Well, sort of. Okay, yeah. He did I the, he did the pilot. I anything he does is probably, in some degree, like CIA consulted. Interesting. Um, Interesting. Yeah, all the way back to Alias. And that actually came out, in a, not in a conspiracy book. That's uh, uh, CIA in Hollywood. was One of the first academic books was by Tricia Jenkins. It's called CIA in Hollywood. Uh, it's published by uh, UT Texas Press. And she has a whole chapter on the CIA coming to consult for Alias. Interesting. Uh, so I, I assume that anything J.J. Abrams afterwards is the same. Do you think uh, having you know done all this research and seeing how much Hollywood has been uh, infected by CIA or, or the occult, where are they now? Because it seems like Hollywood's dead. I mean, obviously it's not, but it doesn't seem to have the power, like you said earlier, that it once had. Are they just focusing on now on, on the media or other me uh, alt media, which I think is happening, uh, or social media, or is it everywhere? Well, I think the older studio system is, is what's kind of going away because that was more of a, a really tight control system that worked pretty closely with the state and various intelligence agencies in a lot of different capacities, both overt and covert. So as the studio system is <clears throat> dying and kind of acquiescing to giving way to the uh, streaming system, now it seems to be Apple studios or Netflix and mm -hmm. it's not, you know, the old, uh, the old model, but uh, yeah, it still has influence, still has power for sure. Uh, I kind of see it, like you said, as like, it's it's kind of all like the same type of legacy system, right? Like the studio Hollywood system, the mass media, news, entertainment stuff, the music, pop star stuff. They're all kind of still the same old system. And <clears throat> they still do have a lot of power and a lot of influence, especially like pop stars, Taylor Swift, obviously. That still is there. Um, where's it going? I think it's just really degenerating into just like uh i always think of like the cinnabites from from hellraiser when they're like we have such sights to show you you know it's like <laughs> we don't even know like the next uh i mean it, i don't it's just pure hell i don't know like, i don't know where it's going like, Wonderful. i don't know what to say like <laughs> When you so you brought up um, you brought up Taylor Swift and I I'm, I'm not a Taylor Swift fan but I'm, where are you with that like is she an instrument of these people uh, has she been hijacked or is she always a part of it you know she's a third generation I believe third generation uh, a daughter of like presidents of banks she yeah. comes from a pretty strong lineage of power so when you see someone like a Taylor Swift or a Beyonce or a Kanye you name the giant figure in the world. What's your take on them? Are they just being uh, hacked into or have they just always been created for this? Great question. I would say that, uh, you know, I, I always try to go with what I can prove when it comes to this kind of stuff. So I don't know if Taylor Swift was uh, abused or ever put into some kind of dissociative mind control tank or so. Like, I don't know about any of that, but nothing would surprise me. I do think, and I actually used to be skeptical of this, like, I remember when I first heard about Britney Spears having like a multiple personality issue and mm -hmm. I was skeptical of that, even though I was a conspiracy theorist, I was like, mm, uh, maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually, after all the conservatorship stuff came out and like the all like, no, it really was like, I something's think wrong. Yeah. Straight up like mind controlled sex kitten pop star. Yeah. Um, Taylor Swift, uh, maybe, I don't know. I, I did uh, hear about what you're saying, that she comes from this long line of like really wealthy uh, banking. I think uh, Miley does too. I think she comes from, a, uh, I think one of her granddad or somebody was like a Federal Reserve bank head, something crazy. Oh, so yeah, something like that. Um, with Katy Perry, there's some very fascinating connections with her dad. If you get into her dad's background, um, used to hand out LSD with Tim Leary. Really? Uh, yeah, and then he becomes like a mega, he's like a mega church pastor. That's right, yeah. Very sus stuff there. Interesting. Um, 
I think it's definitely right to look at the lineage, the background of a lot of these pop stars, because as you know from the Dave McGowan book, there's this curious relationship between mm. all the Laurel Canyon scene people who become very popular pop stars yep. and the families who have been having to have a lot of military intelligence and CIA type yeah, well, backgrounds. There's Jim Jeff Morrison. Yeah, exactly. Uh, as well as mamas and papas, all those people exactly. have this, these very sus connections yep. that are worth looking at. Um, but again, so back to Taylor Swift, uh, you know, it could be with her just something as simple as, you're going to get these deals if you're like the Biden girl. Right. 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 So if you didn't remember though, that was something I, I saw in the last year, that was a huge vindication of a lot of the, the stuff that we've written about and talked about over here was the NATO meeting admitting that they really wanted to use Taylor Swift as a NATO, uh, <laughs> mouth. Right. I was like, uh, <laughs> we've been saying this forever. We I knew mean, it. <laughs> yeah. Was there, was there, I mean, you could go back to Elvis, like Elvis and Colonel Tom. Colonel Tom's kind of a handler to Elvis. I think this has been going on for a long time. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, as we get to these modern pop stars, it seems to be just more like explicitly satanic, especially with Madonna. Like Madonna was yeah. really doing a lot of weird kind of, you know, straight up satanic stuff before everybody else, yeah. particularly with the Kabbalistic imagery. I was watching, just to give one example real briefly. I went back and was watching um, her video for uh, not die another day. Like a virgin? The James Bond where it, she's in it doing the stupid sword fighting scene. Hmm. It's the, it's the uh, I'm just drawing a blank on the, uh, the Pierce Brosnan James Bond that okay. she does the song. So that this one. is like 1999, 2000. Die another day. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Like a sucker. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> That's our clip. For the show, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, if you watch the video, it's like every trope of the mind controlled, fractured psyche <laughs> abused pop star. And she like wraps the Teflon around and she's got wow. Kabbalistic stuff written. on. She writes, she got Kabbalistic stuff written on her. Just straight up. <laughs> Way back then, like before <laughs> anybody was thinking about <laughs> Madonna being a mind controlled Kabbalistic pop wow. star. Right. Wow. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of clues like that that have been laying there for a long time. So you said earlier, like, you, you, you've you been thinking about this for a long time. Is there something, or do you remember when you saw something, or a movie, or, or you saw a song, or a music video, that you were like, something's just not right here, and it kind of opened you up to uh, this whole ridiculous world? Yes, great question. In fact, the seeds were there even back in the 90s. Like, So I wasn't really, like, I was always a movies, movie buff. Like, right. my buddies and I, we were always like, big you know we love kubrick and martin scorsese and yeah of course movies and i remember when conspiracy theory by mel gibson came out i was super hyped about it uh that movie stuck with me even though i didn't really understand all the conspiracies that are referenced in the film right because the film references both actual conspiracies and kind of crazy ones because that's part of the the narrative if you if you've seen it yeah um and that stuck with me because i remember thinking it's weird. And then, you know, and as the nineties progressed, you would hear these stories about Mel Gibson and it sounds like Mel Gibson's kind of a conspiracy theorist. And then, uh, by the time of right after the big nine event, I remember watching, uh, Burmese's, uh, loose change. And I watched a bunch of Alex's documentaries and I didn't really make the connection at that time between Hollywood stuff and like conspiracy stuff. Mm -hmm. But I remember I read an article, somebody, I think it was Hoffman, wrote a an analysis that I read probably in about 2003 or four of how Hollywood puts real conspiracies into the narratives of the movies, either to degrade us, to warn us, or to uh, do a form of psychological operations. And I remember that intrigued me. I don't remember the name of that article, but he was the one that wrote the article that first kind of clicked that idea and then i started thinking about that when i was at college i took a class called uh, hollywood history and we compared the whole class was just oliver stone films mm -hmm. so we compared um many not all of his but many of his movies to the supposed real historical events and That's like cool. how yeah it was it was a great class and i happened to have a, a professor that was a kind of a left-minded conspiracy uh professor so he suggested a lot of books um and that kind of set me down a, a rabbit hole 
I uh, started reading more books from who would eventually be my publisher, Trine Day. Hmm. Uh, they had a trilogy called uh, Sinister Forces. I read the whole trilogy. Then I started realizing, hey, wait a minute, there's this, all this Manson stuff. <laughs> so here's a really weird connection between Manson, CIA, oh, yeah. Satanism and the occult, process church. So that was a big uh, key to this. Yeah. Then you hear about, oh, Scientology, that's Hollywood. L. Ron Hubbard was studying under Crowley. He was in the OTO for a while. Here's another Hollywood occult <laughs> intelligence thing. So these things to kind of start to pile up, you know? Yep. Um, and then you find out when you're in undergrad, grad school, hey, actually, there's other professors that have, I'm not, I wasn't a professor, but other academics who've written on the relationship between Hollywood and the CIA. So, so yeah, it actually goes back to uh, Mel Gibson's conspiracy theory. That's awesome. But other movies too. Other movies too. Like uh, I remember The Godfather always stuck with me, particularly Godfather Two. Either I forget where, where when they go expand into Vegas and they're like compromising the politician. I'm like, hmm. does the mafia play a role in this? And then they're like, there's a rel- relationship between the mafia and Hollywood. And I'm like, what? That's what's that all about, right? Yep. So. All of those worlds, I think, collide as you go down these rabbit holes. Yeah, it's funny that some people watch the movies and it's just a nice bit of entertainment. Then some of us watch it and you're like, they're telling me something. <laughs> I don't know if they meant to tell me, but some of them obviously do. But uh, yeah, it's like you're plugging into a greater truth. <laughs>